بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از دا کنسیپٹ آف اسلامک اسٹیٹ ان ماڈرن ورلڈ آئی ہیو ڈیوائڈیڈ دس ان ٹو ٹو چیپٹرس ون از ریلیٹیڈ دا آرگنائزیشن اینڈ اسٹرکچر اینڈ سیکنڈ از دا فیوچرس آف اسلامک گورنمنٹ ہاو ایور The relationship between Islam and politics is a topic of great interest to both Muslims and non-Muslims in our times. Western secular states, states are based on the government of the people, by the people, for the people, whereas the concept of human sovereignty is completely absent in the political philosophy of Islam. Islamic philosophy is based that sovereignty belongs to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. His sovereignty has been clearly emphasized in the Quran. To Allah belongs the domain of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them and he has full power over everything. And another verse of the Quran, Allah Luhul Khalq Wal Amr, His is the creation and His is the command. Blessed is Allah, the Lord of the universe. It cannot be denied that Islam stands for the sovereignty of Allah and it does not allow all powers to the people in the modern sense of the word. The people of the community exercise only delegated power. They cannot change the divine law. It is, however, reasonable to assume that the lawgiver never intended the Sharia to cover in detail all conceivable requirements of life. He intended no more, no less than to chalk out as it were the legal boundaries within which the community ought to develop, leaving the enormous multitude of possible legal situations to be decided from case to case in accordance uh, with the requirements of the time and changing social conditions. The Quran is saying, for each of you, we have appointed a law and a way of life. The lawgiver has granted us an open road, manhaj or minhaj, for temporal legislation to meet our new requirements. This is the first principle and the base of the Islamic society, the Islamic philosophy. Sovereignty belongs to Allah alone. The second thing is the government. How government will be and what are its responsibilities? Let us see what is the idea of the government in Islam. The government in Islam is to establish the deen, the Islamic way of life, which includes every aspect of man's existence. The government is not for the advancement of any race or nation or any section of humanity to the detriment of any other class or section or individual but for the good of all, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the first four Khalifa had proved this ideal to be achievable. The Quran repeatedly warns against the consequences of corruption and injustice and gives examples of how the decline of mighty empires and prosperous communities were brought about by their misdeeds, we are told in the book of the Allah. This happened because Allah is not one to change the favor which He has bestowed upon a people until they have changed their attitude. Surely Allah is all hearing, all knowing. The main objective of uh, Islamic government is man's righteousness individually 
and collectively. The society must cooperate to follow the envisaged pattern of Islam. This responsibility can be discharged by the state invested with the power of Amr bil Maruf wa Nahi in al Munkar. Amr, it means command, and Nahi, that means prohibition. A state which is administrated in the name of Allah, as every state which claims to be Islamic should be, is bound to safeguard the interests of all, the poor, the needy, the rich, the minorities, as well as the majority community. This can be made possible only by promoting rights, conduct, and suppressing injustice and corruption. This was the guided principle of administration in the days of Prophet and the days of Khulafa Ridwan Tala al Islam does not separate religion and state, religion and politics. It's in Islam, God and the universe, separate and the matter, church and the state are the supplementary to each other. This is the second principle of an Islamic state, how he has to run the state and how he has to deal with the people. The third principle base of the Islamic state is the head of the state. Who should be the head of the state and what is his responsibility? <clears throat> the head of Islamic state must be elected by the people of the country or by their representatives. He must be physically and mentally fit to administer the country. He must be a man of character and integrity understanding and insight as the Quran says verily the noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the most God conscious. As he combines in himself the temporal and spiritual authority, he is required to be a true believer, fully up to date with the working knowledge of the principles, the nusus of the Quran and the nusus of the Sunnah the sunnah, sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and widely awake, aware to the sociological requirements of the community. In brief, his responsibilities are to make the law of Islam the law of the land in order that equity may be prevailed, to arrange social and economic relations in such a way that every individual shall live in freedom and dignity and shall not find any obstacles as much as possible. And as possible as he can in the development of his personality, his or her personality, to enable all Muslim men and women to understand the ethical goals of Islam, not only in the beliefs but also in the practical range of their lives to ensure to all non-Muslim citizens have complete physical security as well as complete freedom of religion, of culture and of social development to and also it is his responsibility to defend the country against attacks from inside and outside and to propagate the teachings of Islam to the world at large. It is, the, it is in these principles and in these alone, that concept of uh, that the concept of the Islamic State finds its meaning and justification. It is uh, realizes them. It real if it realizes them, the head of the state can rightly be described as the God steward on the earth, at least in the part of the earth which falls under his actual jurisdiction. Now the last. Uh, Fourth, I can say that the, the, the pillar is the consultative assembly. The government is only a trust. It is to be carried on the on with the constant and constant and consultation as directed by the Quran and consult with them upon the conduct of the affairs. And we have so many examples for that in our uh, Islamic history. Abu Bakr Siddiq Anhu introduced the 
democratic system of taking counsel, shura, and arriving at decisions by the majority of the vote. For all matters in hand, reference was first made to the Quran for light and guidance. In case of no explicit ruling on the matters was found there, a reference was next made to what is what his prophet has said or what he has done. Not finding any killer ruling from that source as well, resources was finally made to counsel, shura, to counsel to, to counsel, a consultative body to which all the prominent companions were invited. The matter was thoroughly discussed and the line of action agreed by the consensus of opinion, ijma, was finally adopted. As the Sharia has not envisaged details in, in, in respect of various problems of the administration, such as international trade, international relations, although we have the guidelines in the prophetic sira, the biography, but nowadays we have the social media, music, so many things, etc. It becomes imperative for the Majlis Shura Consultative Assembly to evolve relevant legislation uh, through ijtihad, exercise of independent reasoning, of the elected body in consensus or agreement with the Quranic principles and the Sunnah of the Prophet to meet the growing needs of the time. They must be in the light, in the highest interest of the entire community. And based on the consensus ijma, these powers should be refreshed in the elected representative of the community. The members of assembly should be elected by means of the widest possible suffrage. All transactions are to be made according to the Quranic principles. It is necessary that the members of the shura should be men of understanding ulul al-bab, fully familiar with the divine law and the sunnah of the prophet, and understand the current socio-economic and geopolitical problems of the ummah and the world at large. I will conclude it here, inshallah, in next chapter we will discuss the futures uh, of the Islamic government. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand our deed, our religion. Jazakumullah khair. Ahsan al -jaz.